Welcome back to Switzer on the Australian Business Channel. Now for our normal man in the market segment where I ask former Walkley Award winning documentary maker David White to assess a company that mums and dads deal with and invest in. Last time we put the spotlight on Channel 10 and this time White has run his eye over Fairfax at a time when it's trying to reinvent itself. Welcome David. G'day Switz, how are you? Very, very good. Now, Fairfax is a company that people have you know, a long association with as readers. Iconic. Yep, and lots of people have invested in it. The share price has tumbled. Lots of people ask me, my clients, should we get in? And I wanted you to have a look at the changes that they've introduced. So, given the, the share price tumble, given the sort of changes they've made, what they've done, are they making the right moves? Well, initially, you'd have to greet that with caution. Uh, Look, size does matter, that's the old saying, and it, and it holds true here. Uh, with the, the downsizing of the two uh, dailies, the uh, Age and the Sydney Morning Herald, mm. a lot of people have said that uh, Fairfax is suffering from dimension pretension. Mm. Now, uh, I the, like it, <laughs> dimension <laughs> pretension. <laughs> the word came down from on high from uh, Editor-in-Chief Gary Linnell mm. that in no way was anyone from top to bottom of the staff to mention the dreaded T word. Mm. Now, between you and me right here, I can say it to you. Okay. It's Tabloid. 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 Exactly. So now, as far as I'm concerned, that gives ammo to your opposition, right? Mm. So as far as we can work out, the first journo to fire a shot across the bow was, surprise, surprise, News Limited's Malcolm Farr, who said on the ABC's uh, Insiders, okay. ladies and gentlemen uh, of the Fairfax uh, press, you've now gone from a, to a compact uh, composition format. Uh, welcome to tabloid journalism. <laughs> Get used to it. Get used to it. But the interesting thing, White, is the Fin Review has always had a tabloid shape. At the end of the day, even look at a, a newspaper like the Herald Sun mm. in Melbourne. It was such a good tabloid, it really made life very hard for the age. It did. Now, look, I, I can tell you this. The Herald said it spent about nine months of intensive research and neurological testing trying to gauge what the readers would want in mm. a tabloid conversion. Yeah. Sorry, compact conversion. <laughs> and now you can use the T word on this. this I know. I, I can now unleash it to the world. Yeah. But the fact is that uh, I've got to be honest with you, you and I read the Sydney dailies, and I have found it. This is a one-person mm. survey to be a mess. Mm. It really is... You're not the first person to say that. Look, they've taken uh, the broadsheet toothpaste tube and tried to squeeze it into a tabloid thimble, as far mm. as I'm concerned. Mm. And they only had to look at a cross at the, the stable mate, the AFR, the mm. Financial Review, which has had a, a minor rejig, but it looks fantastic. Mm. They've, they've subtly altered the masthead. The layout's better, it's stronger. It exudes confidence. It exudes all the credibility of paper of that it's type. It's kind of, of more readable, isn't it, than your format? It is, mm. and the Herald is anything but. Now, I'm sure they're going to tinker with it and modify it, but for the moment, I'm sorry, it's, it's just a mess. Had they changed the the number and the calibre of journalists? Because, in a sense, you buy newspapers for the people you, you want to read, really, don't you? You do. There's been a number of top-line journos uh, jumping ship, for want of a better word. David Maher has gone, mm. uh, Adele Horan, and, of course, the living legend, Michelle Grattan, she's mm. gone. Yeah. So there's quite a few holes that have to be patched up, and with a federal election looming maybe in September, maybe sooner, mm. they've got to get a lot of top-line people on board just to handle the, the volume. OK, let's... Have you looked at what historically happens when a broadsheet becomes a tabloid. What's the history there? OK, to take some examples, the uh, London Times, the Chicago Sun Times, the New York Post. There's an initial burst of circulation increased, OK? Mm -hmm. But then it settles back to normal, either continuing on or declining. And in Europe, they found that um, the jury is still out, basically. Mm -hmm. There have been some papers that have shut down, others that have continued mm -hmm. with declining readership. The people that have adopted the, uh, the format uh, women and and younger readers. Mm. Now these are the very people that are hemorrhaging to digital, as mm. you know. Now yeah. I don't know about your kids, but my son Sasha is 27. He won't touch a traditional newspaper yeah. with a barge pole. Yeah. He's mobile, he's electronic, it's iPad and iPhone. That's the way he gets his news. Yeah, and, and the big fear for um, the Herald would be and, and the Age, it, people who love a broadsheet mm. and love the the gravitas yes. of that may well migrate to the financial review. So Fairfax still might get yes. serious readers, yes. but the Australian also will benefit from it because it is an old-fashioned broadsheet. I think so. Look, the Herald was quite brave. It opened itself up to uh, the readers at, uh, on March the 8th. It uh, put out its uh, listeners, or rather its readers' uh, letters page, and the response was basically a mixed bag. Mm. I mean, not happy Jan across everywhere, people whinging about the crossword puzzles and the minor features. Mm. 
One gentleman, though, who claimed he'd been 40 years as a uh, faithful reader, cancelled his subscription mm. and went across to what he called the dark side, uh, the Australian. Yeah. So, you know. It, it certainly could happen. All right. What about um, the fact that Fairfax has also pushed itself into the digital area as well? Uh, the, the digital offering, how did you rate that? Extremely well. Their, their online presentation is fantastic. The website is good, easy to, na to navigate, mm. find your way around. It's, uh, the clarity is good, it's well laid out, so it looks good. Mm. It's got a, a soft paywall policy, which means basically the first 20 or 30 stories you access are free. Then a fee comes up. News Limited, different approach, you pay up front. Mm. But they're positioning themselves, obviously, for uh, the day us discerning dinosaurs might decline, mm. and the digital eyeballs will rule the roost. And uh, look, who knows? It could be 20 years away. We just don't know. It's, mm. it's a long term thing. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how the, how the share price reacts. Now, another important area of Fairfax, and people forget about it, is that they've got radio assets. Yes. So, how are those radio assets performing? We know there are potential buyers out there. Oh, yes. Uh, but do you, do you suspect Fairfax is going to hang on to them? For grim death? Okay, I don't care who you consult, any insiders, they could probably tell you who will win the Melbourne Cup this year. They don't know. I mean, Gina and Mark Carnegie and Singo have been circling the radio assets of Fairfax for quite some time. Yeah. They took a tilt last year, they were rebuffed, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, according to Singo's son, Jack, they're going to have another bite. Could happen any time. They're not talking to the press on that one. Mm. But the radio assets are considerable. They've got uh, stations in Perth, mm. in Melbourne. And so 6PR, 3AW. And 2UE yep. uh, in Sydney. And 4BC in Brisbane. That is exactly right. Now, the jewel in the crown is 3AW in yep. Melbourne. It's yep. always at or near the top. Like. Yep. To use an old 2UE slogan. Now, mm. 2UE in Sydney is a basket case, mm. quite frankly. Uh, they're up against the power station, 2GB. They're languishing in the ratings, have been for some time. Mm. They tried to get some GB gloss rub off when they hired Jason Morrison across to do breakfast. Mm. That failed. And they've got two TV refugees in Ian Dicko Dixon and uh, Sarah Maurice to try and make a dent in uh, the AM band's version of Superman, yeah. Alan Jones. Yeah. So. But wasn't it unusual to select people with not a news background or a political background in breakfast, I would have thought that the sensible thing would be to get a Labour-leaning style political journalist to go up against Jones, who's clearly a more conservative yes. political journalist. Well, you would think that. Uh, they're obviously trying to make a distinct point of difference between them and GB to mm. try and make some sort of, or get some traction in the market. The trouble is they've been trying it for quite some time. It is not working mm. unless they get someone of considerable talent who has the kind of credibility and the uh, deliverability of an Alan Jones, mm. but perhaps to the left of the spectrum. I refresh Mike Carlton. Well, maybe, yeah, but I think Carlton's way past the user. Well, he's been, he's been clobbered before, but that's yeah. the kind of person you're going to need. Indeed, they? they've got to find someone like that, and, and that's not easy. No. All right, what about 4BC and 6PR? Are they good rating stations? Well, they're, they're rating reasonably in, yeah. a, in a fairly competitive market, yeah. yes. But once they're not like 3AW. No, mate, 3AW is consistently a ratings winner, and with mm. Neil Mitchell and the like there, you know. Okay. Interesting aspect of Fairfax, you've got a director who's actually suing one of the best performing assets, <laughs> na namely um, uh, who, who Adele Ferguson. Adele Ferguson, of course. Yes. Now, she has been subpoenaed by the court to bring in all the transcripts and bring in all the, the tapes of an interview she did with one of the children, John Hancock. Now, look, we don't know how long that's going to play out. It's been, it's been running for quite some time. The only people making money out of this, as you'd expect, are the lawyers. Now, one person estimated it's about $100,000 a month. Mm. Gina's got deep pockets, so mm. who knows how long that will play out. Mm. But it's, it's, in a sense, you've always thought at Fairfax that there has been a leadership issue. And I think Greg Highwood actually looks like a pretty good appointment. But he's got a lot of things to deal with there, hasn't he? Like, like the radio assets, the new format, can he win young, young people over? Well, what's your feeling, Whitey? You know, if, if you had to put your hard earned, I asked this question with 10, yes. if you had to put your hard earned on Fairfax, do you think they'll make it? Look, I'd be conservative. I would like them to make it because we need healthy, functioning newspapers and competitive ones. Mm. So my heart goes out and says, yes, I'd like to see you make it. The challenges are huge. Mm. And the, the new generational thing with the switch to digital, Look, you know, no one knows what the revenue numbers will be on that. It's a long game. Mm. Do they have the, uh, the capacity to stay in the long game? I don't know. I would certainly hold off at this point. I really would. Yeah, it seems to me, Whitey, one of the, the strategies they should be thinking about doing is, is trying to build in their big-name journalists 
into the, the two UE format, for example. So, yes. so you'd hear the Ross Kittens, they all seem to be on the ABC and not on two UE. I know. Which, which I, if I was Greg Hyrie, I'd be saying, no, no, you work with us. It's called cross promotion. Yeah. You reinforce every product, and they definitely should be doing that. I can't understand mm. why they do go on the ABC, not, not the ABC, but. To you is their natural stable mate. Well, exactly should right. be there. And given the fact that Fairfax is paying their wages, you think yes. it's in their vested interest to keep Fairfax healthy enough to keep on paying wages. Absolutely. Couldn't Why? agree more. Thanks for joining us, mate. Next time we'll look at David Jones, I reckon. Ooh, okay. Okay, mate. Fantastic.